anyway, good afternoon to you all. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks. Uh, click on the, the third one down. On the third one. Here you go. <coughs> thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Anya, for, for this opportunity. And of course, I would like to thank the International AIDS uh, Society for their invitation. Um, well, UNODC uh, indeed is, uh, is a UN AIDS um, convening agency. Um, for people who use drugs and for people in prisons and living in other close settings. And considering our mandates on drugs, on criminal justice, uh, we of course are privileged. Uh, we're in a privileged position to address HIV, uh, HIV prevention, treatment and care uh, precisely for, for people who uh, inject drugs and for people who are living in prisons. Let me see. Here we go. Our World Drug Report for the year 2014, which in fact was launched uh, barely three weeks ago, presents the first ever, and by the way, Daniel, the first ever uh, joint UNODC, WHO, UNAIDS, and World Bank estimates of people who inject drugs and of people who inject drugs and live with HIV. Um, this, this exercise is a major uh, UN interagency milestone precisely to produce strategic information and therefore to better inform uh, national and international uh, policy. Uh, accordingly, the World Drug Report estimates 12.7 million people who inject drugs. And of these uh, people, 1.7 million, uh, or 13.1 percent, of people who inject drugs and who are living with HIV. The highest prevalence uh, rates are indeed in South uh, West Asia with 28.8 percent, followed by Eastern and Southeastern Europe with 23 percent. Uh, important enough, 52 uh, percent of people who inject drugs also have hepatitis C. We at UNODC for the years 2013 to 2015 uh, have adopted a, a, an HIV strategy which is based on three very basic points. Um, first of all, uh, and, and I'm really, really happy to tell you, first of all, a very strong partnership with civil society organizations. Second, a focus on high priority countries. And third, a focus on identifying and addressing the bottlenecks that prevent the scaling up of harm reduction interventions. In 2013, last year, barely a year and a half ago, a joint CSO, a UNODC HIV informal platform was created to facilitate, to really promote aggressively a structured dialogue on meeting the needs, or, or rather to, on meeting the unmet needs of people who inject drugs. This group of CSO, a joint group of CSO and, and UNODC uh, uh, colleagues comprises all major global and regional harm reduction networks, as well as networks of people who use drugs. A secretariat was established. It is currently headed uh, by the IDPC. We meet annually, face to face, and we develop and implement joint annual work plans. Uh, we also work together to advocate, and uh, CSOs are never, ever tired of telling everybody, CSOs help us to better plan, to better implement, to better monitor, and to evaluate our own work. Together, in fact, we selected 24 high-priority countries to increase the efficiency of our limited <coughs> funds. The selection was based mainly on the epidemiological situation, that means the number of people who inject drugs and the number of people living with HIV among people who inject drugs. And secondly, uh, the, the list of 24 high priority countries was based on the country readiness in terms of its policies, legal framework and resources. Our high priority strategy involves extensive consultations with all stakeholders to identify main bottlenecks and to develop focused work plans for the years, well, 2013, this year, 2014, and 2015. UNODC has reprogrammed uh, our scarce resources, uh, both financial and human, to support strategic interventions through seed funding in each of the 24 high priority countries. In these 24 countries, we clustered our common challenges under four main headings. One, and crucial, is a lack of strategic data. Second, the poor access to quality harm reduction services. 
The third cluster of challenges was a lack of supporting legal and policy environments or practices. And the fourth challenge was the lack of resources, especially domestic resources, for harm reduction. And, accord and therefore, we tailored responses uh, to address each one of these clusters of challenges. Let me start with the first one, by way of example, the challenge of knowledge. UNODC is supporting all 24 high priority countries to generate better data on HIV and people who inject drugs. And so there is right now an ongoing joint UNODC World Bank initiative precisely to do that. Precisely to do that with the World Bank uh, in 10 high priority countries. Sorry about that. To improve advocacy, our second cluster of challenges, uh, we are building the capacity of national stakeholders to implement and to better support access of people who inject drugs to harm reduction services. For example, UNODC is launching this very week at the AIDS 2014 three new publications. First, a training manual for police on HIV and people who inject drugs, a policy brief on HIV in women who inject drugs, and a handbook on needle and syringe programs in prisons. Also, we build the capacities, uh, the, uh, the harm reduction capacities of, uh, of networks, uh, and therefore we've launched uh, very recently at UNODC a grants program, and the first call uh, for proposals to CSOs is already underway. As an example of our work to address stigma and discrimination, we are, uh, we, uh, are conducting jointly with the CSOs and the law enforcement agencies workshops in 10 countries and territories. And by doing so, we aim to sensitize key law enforcement officers on harm reduction. We wish to build the capacities of CSOs to advocate better with law enforcement agencies. And we also wish to create a platform that triggers partnerships between CSOs and police officers everywhere. Were. Our fourth challenge is funding. Uh, in June 2016, uh, 2013, UNODC jointly with the World Bank and UNAIDS organized a high-level meeting on the econ economics and financing of harm reduction strategies in Eastern Europe and Central Asia. This is only one example, which, uh, which of course came to the conclusion that we urgently must put in place a strategy to increase domestic funding from harm, for harm reduction interventions. To close, uh, dear friends, um, let me assure you that uh, about our unwavering support from the top leadership of UNODC to help countries meet the UNGAS target of reducing new infections by, 20, by 50 percent among people who inject drugs. At UNODC, we are also deeply committed to the post-2015 agenda and to tackle the substantial unmet needs of people who inject drugs and other key populations. I thank you.